everybody, this is me, Jordan D. White, and I am going live here on Marvel, and uh, I'm about to see if I can invite Teeny Howard onto this here chat with me. Um, let's see. <laughs> A lot of people want to go on to the chat with me. Uh, really, I'm just looking for Teeny, so... <laughs> Thank you very much for uh, being interested in, in chatting with me here. Uh, but the goal is that it will be me and Teeny any second. Here we go. Here we go. Hope everybody's having a good day today. today. Um, hey, there we go. Hi, Jordan. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Hey, I'm good. <laughs> uh, I'm good. Good, good, good. Coffee oh. on the West Coast. Oh, that's right. So it's quite early for you. For me, it's it's noon. So it's what five? Or, no, so, uh, not nine. Three hours difference, right? Nine o'clock. Yeah. Well, yeah. So it's like it's ten o'clock. No, it's not noon, is it? It's one. <laughs> I don't even know what time it is anymore. This is what we call comics making time, folks. Well, <laughs> no, this is this is this is my schedule being blown to bits by uh, working from home and taking care of my son all the time. Is what it is. Yeah. So sorry about that. It's, it's 1 p.m. here in New York City, or New York. I should say Jordan is by far, the, as an editor, should be the most organized person in the X office. <laughs> sure, I should be. Um, yeah. I should be. No, 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 I, I do my best. So let's, let's, uh, let's talk. How, how is this uh, crazy quarantine going? You, you work from home anyway. Does it make a difference, or how much of a difference does it make? Uh, yeah, it, you know what? It makes a little bit of a difference now that I live in, when I lived in North Carolina, like I did for years, uh, I was like a total recluse, like a swamp witch who lived in a bog and didn't go out ever. Uh, but now that I live in LA, I've been enjoying, like, can you, can you hear me okay, Jordan? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, I've been, uh, you know, enjoying going out, and there are a lot of writer friends I have living in this area. Terry Duggan lives, you know, on the West Coast, and uh, I've been having fun going out and seeing friends, actually, and going out and having, like, good camp writer days, or I meet up with my writer buddies, and it's been like, wow, I have, like, a, you know, like a, a, a culture of writers to hang out with and to go outside and, and well, now, well. <laughs> but I went inside with my husband and my two cats who are like, you know, as it should be my favorite people to hang out with. Yeah, so yeah. being inside with them is like, there's no one else I'd rather be inside with. Yeah, I, you know, I, I feel the same, you know, hanging out with my, with my, my little one is the best part of the day. It's so much, so much fun. It just is a complete destruction of my schedule and rhythms that's all so while i'm hanging out with him and playing with him is is the best and i don't think about work at all and i just have a good time and then i put him down for his nap and i come back to my work and i'm like oh my god i have no i have no idea what i'm doing what's going on right. <laughs> what are <words? laughs> uh so when i moved out here so when i was in north carolina i was always very much like a like a nine to five writer. Like I would wake up and I liked working like during work time during the day, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. Got very into that. And like, you know, I was on the East Coast with you guys. So it's like, you know, I would work until about you guys would have work for the day. And then when you guys left, I would, I would, yeah, I would be on too. And then when I moved to the West Coast, it was like, well, I'm still on a really East Coast schedule. So, um, you know, with 7 a.m. till 2. Like, and that wasn't so bad. I was doing okay with that. And then this <laughs> And now we've become like a total night owl, which means my whole schedule feels like it's moved back a day, because if I want to have something done for you to read it on like a day you need it, that means I now have to have it done, before, like yeah. completely done the night before <laughs> because of time and because of the way my indoor, my, my life is fully indoors now. <laughs> well, let's talk about Excalibur. What do you think? Uh, how How... How has working on Excalibur lived up to what you thought it would be? Like you, when you came and you pitched, you, you, we've talked about before how when you pitched the book, um, it wasn't actually Excalibur. It was it was a book that had a lot of the same ideas in it, but it was not exactly the same. Um, how how has it been? Like do you do you love it as much as you would have loved that book, or what have you found that's new that you that you like? I think I want more. Oh. Um, and 
And what's weird is that, like, I loved it a lot going in. Um, like I said before, like, you know this, like, when I first read Jonathan's treatise <laughs> on the X-Men, you know, you had, you had a very, like, your story. I don't want to call it a story bible because it was very much like a, like, an approach. Like, I mean, there was yeah. a lot of stories up in there, but it was very much like a treatise. Very much, you know, the way Jonathan is, is he, he approaches things from, like, a very big conceptual level. And I like that, too. Um, so, I, when I read his take, I was like, yeah, I'm totally on this. Like, I've been, like, an armchair historian since I was tall enough to read. Uh, like, I, have, I, I love, like, cultural movements and, and, and sociology and all this. And so, I saw all that in what John's doing. And I was like, uh, you know, there's a fantasy angle here. There's a magic angle here. There's a... Um, a cultural expansion of this idea. And when I came into the room, I was, like, super... I mean, Jordan was, was, Jordan was there. I was for you guys. Uh, you know, I was super um, focused on that more than anything. I was like, I want to come into the room and talk story with you guys. Like, I very much didn't read it and was like, okay, I want these characters and these X-Men and this story and nothing else will do. So much of what we were doing was not completely new stuff that I was like, okay, I have a couple characters. Like, Apocalypse has always been someone that I was like, I really think has an interesting position right now that I want to get deep into. Um, but there were, uh, like, I, I came into the room less like, these are the X Men I want, this is the team I want, I'm going to fight for these characters, and more like, we're all going to build this story together. Here's the part I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, here's, like, the section of the pie that I would like to cover in our book of Born on Krakoa. We're all doing it. <laughs> do you remember that, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you do, but because like, you know, I don't know how many people know this, that we ac I actually had a, a, uh, a little box of, of index cards and we just wrote down the name of every X character we could think of and laid them out on the table and everybody was basically like, was call, in the room calling dibs. Like, oh, okay, I definitely want this character. Well, hold on, this character's got to be over there. And so we could, like, assemble it. was a draft. <laughs> it was so cool. Oh, it was an X-Men draft. <laughs> and you, I, and I will never forget that you, while Jerry was out of the room, tried to slip Polaris into Marauders. And he came back and was like, what's cool? What's this? What's going on here? And you were like, no, no, it's good, it's good. And it didn't, it didn't stay. It did not. <laughs> um, so I love, I love Polaris. I love... Uh, I love Lorna a lot, and she, um, you know, she's gonna be in Leah's X-Factor book, and I'm, like, so glad for that, because Leah is, like, the perfect person to write Lorna right now, I think. Mm -hmm. And she's such a, her and Jonathan have, like, a really cool approach on, like, Lorna's status on Krakoa, and I really love it. However, yeah, I totally was, like, I love Polaris, and I, I didn't have a place for her next caliber, but I really wanted to see her in, like, a starting a starting laptop. Uh, I didn't, um, yeah, so I, I had this thought, well, I was like, well, Polaris, she's got magnet power, she's like right. a human compass, put her on a boat book, and I just, that does make sense, it's just, there was no, yeah, there was no, like, big good story reason, I just wanted someone to draw, like, a very cover of Polaris on, like, an old-fashioned map, like, pointing north, like, I just wanted that. <laughs> Again, my favorite part was just that you did it while he was not in the room. He no, was just like, yeah. I'm just going to slip this one over here. Boop. I was Scorpio, baby. I was like... <laughs> so, like, he was going to come back and be like, oh, is it that? I guess I said okay. <laughs> right. Um, he would just get home and look at his, like... Because we were all taking, like, photos of, like, the wall we stuck it on, so yeah. we would know, like, who was on whose team. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I just go back in. Jerry being like, blurs. Although I, I was reading uh, uh, X Factor one day, um, and all of a sudden I realized, and I think I, I can't remember if I said this on the Slack or just to Leah, that Polaris is the North Star, and we have Polaris and North Star now on, working together. So I was like, oh, that's funny. Maybe one of them should be on a boat for a little bit. <laughs> um, so speaking of speaking of summits, um, I've got some some uh, some pictures to share. But yeah. Nobody else in public has ever uh, seen before. Yeah, we've, we've got some exclusive uh, behind the scenes. I mean, this is like, this is for you guys, this isn't even like, some of these aren't even like ours. This is just us. Man, we have such a good time in Chicago. Yeah, we went to C2E2, the last uh, 
convention that happened, I think. Uh, now, my, I'm covering up part of the pictures here. So right here where, where my video is, that's Vita. Uh, Vita Ayala. But there's me and Tini in the lobby of uh, the, the C2E2. Uh, I forget what hotel that is. Yeah, the McCormick. We had no hiatus. We had so, uh, so much fun at that show. And, like, it was a little weird because I think there was a lot of that idea of, like, well, what if, you know, we don't get to do any more shows this year? So we really, I don't know, we just, it's almost so magical. We just did a time. We, oh, and I should, like, we really almost, just, like, hung out. Go ahead. You're like, oh, Jerry Duggan. Yeah, Jerry Duggan took, took these photos. He's a, an amazing photographer. He, he, takes pictures a lot but he doesn't it doesn't share them a lot so we were, we're very thankful to him to let him yeah. see these he's so good though he's he's, he's so sneaky like, what, like you never noticed you know, I, I mean, he worked out these photos for us um we've seen like a few of them but we you know we asked if you had any photos from c2e2 to share with you guys uh of you know the room and now like peering at that like i have secrets on it um aside from who we're sitting in there like uh, yeah this, yeah, this but, is uh, so after the show we had a, we actually had an X summit, um, so we did the the whole convention, and then we stayed an extra uh, you know day and a half so that we could all get in a room together and beat out all sorts of new X Men stories. Worked a lot on Ten of Swords and worked a lot on what's, what's happening afterwards. Um, hey, there's Al Ewing. He's not writing an X book, um, but there he is again with Leah. <laughs> and uh, this was uh, outside of a, an Italian restaurant we went to. That was wonderful. There's Vita. Italian food I've ever had. It was really good. It was the first time I had ever had uh, chicken parm because for a long time of my life I really hated tomato sauce. Um, sure. But it was great. It was it's great. Um, I've gotten over it. Uh, there's Ben, uh, Ben Percy, in the room, pitching us some probably Wolverine gutting somebody or something. <laughs> I also have to point out that Jerry takes all these photos completely candidly and doesn't tell anyone, and Ben yeah. still looks like a like, magazine editorial in this. great um, this picture is uh i think the night after our summit up out at the bar uh sitting there talking about what's going on and my again my uh my the, the picture of me here the video is blocking the only photo that we have of jonathan hickman so <laughs> i don't know like remains... is people watching move you around on the screen I, I, don't I, know. Know. I definitely can't, but uh, I don't know if anybody else can. Uh, at any rate, there's the mysterious Jonathan Hickman looking at his phone. The mysterious Jonathan Hickman, yeah, and then there's, from the left right, there's Leo Williams, you know, Ayala, and me uh, making, like, some sort of really intense face. I don't even know. I remember I was talking about something really serious because <laughs> John was looking at something kind of silly at the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and we kept checking out what he was looking at while I was, like, getting really serious. But, uh, yeah, that was, like, Monday night, like, we were all just, we'd been working, but, like, the bad news is we all really like talking about this stuff. Yeah. So we could just go out and keep talking about it, even though we say we're sick of it, we don't want to talk about it. <laughs> we're, we're like, uh, no more work, let's go get drinks and food, and then we're just like, hey, man, where's the players in your book? Like, <laughs> over dinner. Uh, and we were, well, and also, again, this is after the summit, so we're also excited because we're all talking about the new ideas that we hadn't had yet. Um, I know a lot of that night we spent talking about uh, a pitch that Leah had. Uh, yeah, for that's, a character that's what we were talking about at the time, yeah, actually. For a character who hasn't really had a spotlight mm -hmm. in, in the the. the post uh, House of X world yet. But. No, and Leo was, had, had been spending most of the day talking John to really an exciting new take on things, and that's, that's like, one of the coolest, uh, coolest things about this, is like, yeah. I don't know, I really love the retreats, the little extra oh, treats yeah. we do, like, uh, it's just fun, like, we, we just like each other, and we, like, trust each other, and that's the big thing, I think, too, is we trust each other as storytellers, so, like, well, they're like uh, they're like council meetings, but less contentious, and we get on with. <laughs> okay, wait. So, which council member are you in in the in the Krakoa Council of the X Summits? I think I'm Exodus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see it. Because like see it. he's not as like shitty as 
like sinister. And he's not as like doomy as like Apocalypse. But he is like pretty weird and oblique. And like I've seen some scripts where he points out those things where I'm like, I would be the person to point that out. Wait. Um So okay. But I'm gonna bad we make it. Uh, well, okay. Okay. But I'll, 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 I'll buy you as Exodus. I think that's interesting. Yeah, I think it'd be Exodus because it's just like weird and like, you know, old. <laughs> you mentioning Sinister made me be like, oh, Jonathan's obviously Sinister. But then I was like, first of all, he's like all of them. But then I was like, wait, he can't be Sinister because yes, he can be goofy and ridiculous sometimes. But he's got way too many, well, he's got way too many evil plots. Sinister has evil plots. He's Sinister in the big room. Yeah, well, for sure, in the big Marvel show. In the big Marvel room, right, everyone? Jonathan is the sister of that council. <laughs> but is he the Magneto of ours? Or the Xavier? That's the question. Or is he the Apocalypse? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think, I feel like I'm the, I'm the, I'm the Doug Ramsey, though. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, you are! Also, because when no one can figure out what we're talking about, you're always the one that's like, whoa, wait, 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 this doesn't make any sense, slow down. So you, like, translate from, like, <laughs> like you're always the best with, with me because, like, I get in a really weird, like, writer shorthand in my head. And, like, when it's you, me, and Jonathan, like, you'll understand, like, like, Jonathan will get in his, like, weird writer way, like, 50% of what I'm talking about and be like, yeah, Jordan, this makes sense. And you're like, no, 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 you both need to, like, Use human words to explain this to me, and not well, just like obliquely reference books you don't read. Like, I do feel like I feel like a lot of the time, not not in, not specifically in the X retreats, although in, in all of them, like a lot of the times, I feel like I'm sitting there going, I'm hearing two people talk, but I feel like they're talking about different things, and I need to jump in to be like, you guys are not saying the same thing, even though you're both going yes. That's not. <laughs> Um, hey, I also have some uh, images from Excalibur. This is a brand new image. <laughs> this is my special request to show you guys this morning. This, uh, can I say what that she from? Sure, yeah, yeah. It's from Excalibur 12. Mm-hmm. And that there is, uh, you guys might, if you're reading the book, you might recognize Richter. Um, and he hey, usually um, has a shirt on, though. He usually does, but, you know, uh, sun's out, guns out, and we, uh, he's very excited for us all to be able to go outside and, and be healthy and use Earth powers, uh, I guess, too. You'll have to read the next issue and see, which I'm sure you guys will, because everyone's been so excited and eager for more x and uh, we're excited to get that to you when we can. I also have three images from uh, issue 11, from the colors, uh, the quick quick little images here. Uh, there's there's Ripto again with Captain Britain and Rogue uh, getting into a fight. Uh, I can't say too much. Yeah. yeah isn't that a great one, though? Yeah. And then uh, also Gambit as well in the fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I have one more picture, but... It, I, the cropping on Instagram is weird. This is supposed to be plain important information. <laughs> this is supposed to be people should see it, Jordan. Right. <laughs> it's supposed to be. I mean, you can in the image you can see his face. It's apocalypse. You can see his face and his hands and his arms. And for some reason, Instagram is cropping it just to just to his abs. The platform so. knows what generates. <laughs> Uh, interaction. The algorithm is aware that this is what the people want. Yep, yep, yep. Well, well, there it is. So those are all the. Look at those that, parts. Yeah, people, people loving, loving the Paca abs, apocalypse. Apocalypse. Right. 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 Yeah, I don't know. What else should we, uh, should we talk about about? I don't know. Uh, I was saying we could take some questions, but it's kind of hard to. To read down there, but if you ask a question and we can see it, um, we'll answer it if it's something we can answer. Well, there's actually, I'm, I've got like a little questions thing, although the problem is. Uh, oh, you do have any good ones? A lot of them are. are no, that's not me. I'm sure you guys have very good questions. A lot of them are saying hi. There's a lot of them, and I'm trying to scroll through them. Uh, uh, what's your favorite sport and hobby? Are you both working for Marvel? The answer is yes, but sorry. What's your favorite sport and hobby? 
Well, your sport is hockey, so I like to watch. Um, but I live in LA now, so I kind of like basketball, just because everyone does here. Oh, is that? Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, I always being a basketball. Um, but I, uh, like the West Coast is, I feel like being a basketball. Um, but yeah, like, I grew up watching hockey, and I like hockey. I go to hockey games, like, usually once every year or two, if I can handle it. Uh, my favorite hobby, uh, lately I'm baking, like everyone else, but I also play a lot of video games, and I love to watch documentaries, like, the weirder the better. Um, like, I watched Tiger King, like everyone else, and now I'm like, I was like, what do I watch? It's like Tiger King. I'm like, I've watched everything. That's like Tiger King. I've watched every weird documentary. <laughs> I haven't watched Tiger King. Everybody keeps talking about it. Like, literally, like, all, every podcast I've listened to this week has talked about it in some capacity or other. Like, everyone is talking about it, and I haven't watched it, so I guess I'm super left out. I, I caught up on Better Call Saul last night, and the most recent episode was brutal. Um, that was fun. Uh, I've been listening to, I don't know if you've, you've seen on, on, on Twitter, I... While I'm working at home, I have listened to almost nothing except for REM. I saw that. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so impressed by your ability to listen to music in a catalog form. I'm like, too. It's, it's fun. I, I, like, I like to, because I love music. I appreciate it. Like, I'm I love, it. like, owning music and organizing music and, like, listening to it. Like, I, I, twice in my life, I have listened, I have done, like, more, more than twice, I think, but two big ones like musical missions once back when I had CDs and once when I was in mp3s where I went I'm going to listen to everything I have and it yeah. took months and months when I did CDs I did it alphabetical by artist but I would only I had a five disc changer and I would only put three by the same artist at once so that I would get some variety Sure. And when I did it uh, with MP3s, I listened to every album I owned in alphabetical order by album title. And that's yeah, yeah, the last year. This changer is. <laughs> Good point. Good point. It was oh, sorry, five, five CDs. One yeah, CD you guys know and it would, and you could that way, that, that way, the amazing idea that you could shuffle five albums at once. <laughs> And it would play a song from one album followed by a song from another album, and you're like, oh, how, how, how is this possible? How can this be? <laughs> Physical media. It's like, a, it's like a radio station, but one that only plays five albums at once. But still. <laughs> it's like the This Is R.E.M. station on Spotify. <laughs> right. Well, well, although I haven't been listening to the station, I've been, I, I've, 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 I've gone on, uh, uh, like Amazon Music, and they have like all of their albums. And I've, I went through all of their albums uh, chronologically, and now I'm going through them in reverse popularity order. <laughs> hey, cat! <laughs> he was oh. a high, and he yells like I'm. <laughs> that was, a, but it was still a cat. I miss cats. I love cats. They're the best. Someday I'll get more cats. Uh, no, I, I really I'm impressed. So the other night I thought about your REM project, and I was like. Maybe I should just, like, pick a band and listen to their, like, everything they've put out. Well, and uh, the other thing is that they're a band I don't, I, I was not, I, I, I don't mean I'm not a fan, I wasn't a fan of theirs, like, I didn't like them, but I, I wasn't that familiar with them. I knew all their hit songs, and I knew a couple of theirs, and that was about it. And I was like, let me just dive in. Now I'm a fan. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's, I feel like there are so many bands that I love that I'm, like, that I, like, I already love, that I listen to, like, the 30 songs I really love from them, and I'm, right, like... Right. Um, so, like, the first two I thought of are, like, The Cure and, like, Depeche Mode, because those are two of my favorite bands. Yeah, do it. Duh. But, um, and then, I don't know, so then I was like, well, maybe Kate Bush, because I love her, too, and then I just started, like, listening to Hounds of Love, like, the album on repeat, and I was like, this is my problem, I get to, like, <laughs> one album, and I'm like, I don't want to change it, or, like, I get to one song, and I'm like, I want to listen to that song again. I think, I think if I were to do it, I would have to do it with, like, my records or something. Spotify or like my computers, it's too easy for me to like get bored and click next. But if it's like my record player, then it's just like, well, it's a record, it, it plays. Right. You can, it, I mean, you can actually pick it up and move it over, and yeah. it's difficult. <laughs> I, I, I have a record player. I have a couple of records, but I used to have a record player when I was in like college, but I haven't had one for a very long time, unfortunately. We've been using ours a little more because we're in the house, you know? Right. So it's nice to be like, well, I'm just going to put something on the speaker. Uh, <laughs> he also keeps bumping the table. My mic, or my phone is on. She's huge. She's like a, I don't know, he's like 15 pounds. Um, so, he 
he's there he is again. Uh, he's very bossy. Let me see. I'm going to take a look and see if I uh, if I can see any other uh, quick questions that anybody else wants to know. Uh, anything new with Nightcrawler? Yes, but we can't tell you what. But the answer's big. Oh, okay, sorry. I, I thought you lost the suit. We got a message from Leah, and I had to check what it was. It was just for saying we were adorable. <laughs> uh, okay. Who is your favorite Marvel character? Iron Man. All right. Asked and answered. Why Iron yes. Man? Uh, so I I grew up really liking superhero cartoons and stuff, but when I read comics, uh, it's kind of a bummer, but I was like a little girl who didn't always feel like welcome in comic shops, so I read a lot of comics from libraries and bookstores, which meant I didn't read a lot of superhero comics, but I liked superheroes. Uh, but then when I was like 18 or 19, I was old enough to be like, oh, I'm going to go wherever you want. And uh, my husband and one of my best friends, uh, or sometimes my boyfriend, but uh, one of my best friends were like, you know, like you like superheroes and you like comics. Like, why aren't you reading superhero comics? Um, and so uh, I decided to go with Iron Man because like the movie was wrapping up and everyone was really into my friends. But before even the movie came out, I read... Uh, Ultimates, I think, was like one of the first books they gave me because at the time, Ultimates was very of the time. Um, and we read it, and okay. it was like, I don't, I don't know why I clung to Iron Man so badly. And then, like, what's funny is, like, so much of the first Marvel stuff I read was just like portrays him in a really bad light, like stuff like Civil War. Um, yeah, and where people think yeah, of him as like, you know, him, it's, it's questionable. Oh, it's terrible. He, like, he brings the out of the champagne bottle, like, he's terrible in it. Um, but I don't know. I uh, I was working a job, and I ended up in a in a um, field where I, I really didn't like what I was doing. Like I went to work every day not feeling like a very good person because of what I did, and feeling like the work I was doing was contributing to like things I didn't believe in or didn't want. And so uh, it was a big inspiration for me to change my life. It was like reading like fractions of Invincible Iron Man, Fractional Arcos, amazing, incredible poem Invincible Iron Man book, where, uh, you know, it's a lot about Tony being like, who is this? Who am I? Um, yeah. Maybe it's such a good book. It's like my favorite, probably my favorite superhero around of all time. And uh, it means a lot to me. And it was also the thing that when I read it, I was like, you know, I, I wanted to write comics, but I didn't think I could. And I've done like little cartoons and sketches and stuff of, you know, because it was my favorite thing to read. I've always loved reading sequential art. Uh, and I just remember being like, oh, I think I could not. I didn't read it and was like, I can do that because I don't think I'm a stable writer. It's not fraction. But uh, I read it and I was like, I could write superhero comics if they're allowed to be like this. Um, like, if they can be this, like, real and, like, sad and, like, and it was, you know, it came out before Hawkeye in a lot of ways, which I think Hawkeye was what taught a lot of people that, that superheroes can be sad and real. But for me, it was like, it was an inspired man that taught me that. Because all, all those bones of that are still there. Um, all those, the, 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 you know, the bones of what people love about Hawkeye are there in, in Iron Man's wallet. But, and that was just the one I read first, and I'm, I'm much more Tony than I claim. Uh, I'm, I'm ambitious, I like the future, I like, um... Big, big concepts, and uh, I like, but I guess, you know, I'm, I'm like, I, I like Tony because he's not, he's not Reed Richards, he doesn't always have a plan, he sometimes just has a passion. Uh, maybe I'm the Tony and Jonathan Three, maybe that's <laughs> a working relationship. Because I'm like, good ideas, weird stuff, sometimes I get lost in my own depression. And he's like, I have a plan. Would you like to see the plan? Would you like to listen to me and use the plan? And I'm like, maybe. <laughs> so, I can see that. No, I can see that. I can see that. Maybe that's our working relationship. But yeah, Iron Man's my favorite. How about you, Jordan? Who's your favorite? My favorite Marvel character is Spider-Man. Uh, I've been a fan of Spider-Man since I was a tiny, tiny, tiny little kid. And uh, he does what's right, even though it always uh, hurts him and costs him. And he doesn't want to and had to learn that lesson the hard way. And I don't know, he's just great. He's just great. And I, uh, like, my whole my whole worldview is, like, centered around Spider-Man, basically, because I love him so much. So, that's fun. Um, hey, somebody asked a question in there that made me realize something that we didn't do, and we should do that, and then we should uh, 
sign off because we're getting it's getting late. But we never actually talked about who we are. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my fault as the person who initiated this at the top uh, <laughs> I did say I was Jordan D. White but I don't think I said that I was senior editor in charge of the X-Men oh, and, and uh, <laughs> you know, us. <laughs> and uh, uh, how we're my now? Uh, Excalibur uh, among other books uh, Strike Hi, I'm, what? I'm T. <laughs> I'm losing my voice um, I, I write Excalibur and Strike Force and I've written and Age of Conan Belief and a book called Death's Head that was really fun. Yeah. Uh, I write a lot of books for Marvel, but uh, I'm also working on uh, Ten of Swords, which is our big X-Men event that we announced. Um, it is. Uh, and I guess yeah. we, should, we should plug that and then, uh, and then we should go, which is just Ten of Swords is going to be crazy. It's going to be huge. It's going to involve every single X-Men book we're doing. And Jonathan and Tini cooked up such a cool story. Uh, it's really deeply rooted in both stuff that he set up in House of X and then also stuff that Teeny brought in in Excalibur and it grows out of them in this awesome, awesome way that will, uh, like I said, it'll pull in every single aspect of the X-Men universe. It's super cool. Yeah. Uh, if I can say one thing to get you hooked, um, if you're reading those books right now, like I know sometimes it's long time uh, comic fans, like we never know what to expect from events. You know, uh, what, what is that? Um, but I can say honestly that everything in Ten of Swords has come really organically out of what Jonathan and I have, have been doing. It, it came, it <clears throat> was less a like proscriptive, let's do an event feeling and more of a Jonathan and I had, we realized that we've been telling the kind of the same story or at least two parts of the same story that mm-hmm. came together really neatly to make something really cool happen. Um, and I don't know that I'll ever see anything like this in comics again, but I love it right now. So, I'm uh, having a blast. Yeah, I, I, I think people are really going to love it. And uh, I can't wait for them to see it. I can't, I can't wait. All right, well, we should probably call it a day. I think we went a little bit long, but hopefully people enjoyed it. Uh, thank you all for watching. And, uh, you know, keep reading X-Men comics. They're super fun. Yeah. Follow us to find out more about X-Men Comics. And, uh, hey, if you're wanting to read more about X-Men Comics and you're stressed out right now, order Hellions 1 from your local comic shop if you haven't, because Hellions rules. Mm-hmm. So, Wells and Steven Segovia, and I know that it's brand new, so some of you maybe haven't been able to grab it yet. Sure. Uh, but you should. And I know it seems really good, too. <laughs> I think, if I remember correctly from what I've been seeing, I believe all of House of X and Powers of Ten are now up on Marvel Unlimited, and the Dawn of X books will start coming out on Marvel Unlimited this month. So lots of cool uh, X-Men stuff out there if you want to check it out. Yeah, definitely. Right. If you, if you, yeah, lots of comic stories. Stay inside. Stay safe. Stay well read. Follow us on social media. Be good. Wash your hands. Don't cough in anyone's mouth. Flip. All right. Everybody, have a great one. We'll see you all soon. Bye.